الله الكبير بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالب الله الكبير Let us uh, direct all of our thanks and appreciation to God, the Almighty, the All-Merciful. And so uh, it's a huge opportunity for us that, that we are here today. And uh, God has seen it fit for us that uh, and left the, uh, the uh, will in our hearts that, that uh, we like to commemorate him and, and extol his name and, uh, and uh, glorify him. Endlessly, and this is this is really the climax of our week, and so we have to we have to um, pay uh, uh, thanks and appreciations to God, and and be grateful to Him for for giving us this opportunity. And again, as I say, this is not by accident. This is by divine design that we are here, and so we are still worthy of of this huge blessing that that God has seen it fit for us. Um, uh, gratefulness is a, is a God-like quality, and so we should practice to be grateful to God uh, because He's grateful to us for what we do for Him. And so we have to, we have to reciprocate, and we have to be grateful to Him and uh, make sure that, that we understand this. Um, what I wanted to discuss with you today, I wanted to go to the Quran. And, um, chapter 1, we discussed chapter 1 the uh, past couple of weeks. And so, as soon as you finish chapter 1, um, there's a verse, which is verse number 8, I'm sorry, the 8th uh, numbered verse in the Quran, and the first verse in chapter 2, which is the longest chapter in the Quran, and it's a set of initials, Alif Lam Mim. And so, um, so as you see here, I spelled it out in, uh, in English, Alif Lam Mim, and so... Um, uh, so what does this mean? Well, uh, uh, we, got, we got to know these initials a long time ago, about 40 years ago. And, and, so, and since that, it has evolved and it has gotten stronger and has more dimensions and meanings for us. And so the idea about it is that we can actually understand what the Quran is saying and makes it easy for us to remember the Quran where everything and all these important commandments that God has given us and the warnings that he gives us somehow spelled out in these, in these unique verses with a given number. And those numbers are coming from this mathematics that we keep talking about every week. And so, so today I want to just talk about Alif La Mim. And, and so... If I have a blank sheet here and, and I want to write it down, and this is Aleph, Lam, Mim, three Arabic letters, okay? And so we know now that the number has to be 90, uh, 98, 99. It can't be anything else, okay? With 4,502 Alephs in there. The frequency of the letter Aleph is 4,502. And so that makes it uh, 9,899. Uh, 9, and that's equal to uh, 19 times 521. So we've known a lot more since, since that was discovered a long time ago. And so, so today what I want to do is I want to I give it a unique number system here which gives you the, the numerical value of every letter here, but instead of adding them up, which adds up to 71, I'm going to spell it out and concatenate them. That makes it a unique form. Okay, so since Arabic is written from right to left, I'm going to start the numbers from also right to left. So Aleph is 1, Lam is 30. Okay, so here we go. So that makes 301, and Mim is 40. So that makes it 40301. 
Okay? And so this number here is, is a unique number and that tells you in, in numbers, in the form of numbers, what Aleph Lam Mim is. Okay? Suppose you were just reading numbers. That's what it is. That's Aleph Lam Mim. Okay? So this number happens to be a bi-prime or a semi-prime. That means it's a factor, can be factored out in two primes. Okay? It's factored out in two primes. Now we see that how this actually generates 9127 from the Quran. Okay? So I'm going to write this one 40. Three oh one equals one ninety one times two eleven. These are the two prime factors of this number. So that means that if you multiply one ninety one by two eleven, you're gonna get you're gonna get four oh three oh one, which is Aleph Lam Mim. Okay, so now I'm going to assign the indices of these two prime numbers. Okay, so that becomes 43 and 47. Okay, so that's the that's the that's the. Um, um, the two indices of these two prime numbers, 191 and 211, okay? So now what we do is we go to the Quran again. We're not going to go anywhere, okay, just to the Quran. And we look at two chapters in the Quran, chapter 43 and chapter 47, okay? Chapter 43 is called Vanity and chapter 47 is called, is called Muhammad, okay? So what I want to do is I want to go to, to the Quran, and go to chapter 40, uh, 43 first. Okay. And as you see, this chapter actually has 89 verses. Okay. So we'll go to our write-up sheet here. And we're going to say, okay, 43 has 89 verses. And this number here, 47, I'm going to go to chapter 47 now. Go to chapter 47. And in that chapter, it's called Muhammad, as you see, and it has 38 verses. So I go back to my sheet here, and I say, 47 has 38 verses. Okay. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna look I'm gonna go back and take a look at those and see see what is really the relation between those two numbers are and those two chapters are. Okay. If I go there, I see that chapter forty seven happens to be the sixty seventh uninitial revealed. It was the sixty seventh surah in the amongst the uninitial surah that was revealed. Okay? So if I go to 43, chapter 43, 43, okay, I noticed that it's the 19th initial surah that was revealed. That's uninitial, this is initial. But remember now, the 19th prime number is actually 67. Okay? So anyway, so we go back to our sheet there, and we add these two numbers up, namely 4389 and 4738. We just add them up, and they equals to 9127. Okay. 
So we started with the Aleph Lam Mim in chapter 2, and we ended up with chapter 9 having 127 verses. And this comes, all of it comes basically from the Quran, okay? And so every time you finish the Al Fatiha, you, you always say, you say that already, that 9 has 127 verses. Every time you re read the Quran and say Aleph Lam Mim, again you are saying that 9 has 127 verses because of this mathematics. Okay? And now the way I've written it is a unique way of writing this because this can only be Aleph Lam Mim and nothing else. See? If I add them up, it adds up to 71. 30 plus 40 plus 1 is 71. But that 71 is not unique because another Arabic word could be also 71. You understand what I'm saying? It's very important for people to understand this. This, this. this coding here is extremely robust. It's a very formidable code because that specifically says Aleph Lam Mim and nothing else. Okay? That is amazing. So I want this point to be noticed that when you write it like this, this becomes a unique version in mathematics of those three letters and nothing else. Okay? There is no other Arabic word like that that gives you 40301. Four, 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 zero, zero, no other Arabic uh, set of letters that can do that. Only this one can do that. Okay. So every time you say that in both chapters, chapter, chapter, this chapter and chapter after this, and those, all those chapters, including a sajda, which is chapter 32 in the Quran, which starts with Alif Lam Mim also. Okay. There are six of them all together. See, tampering with this is a, is, a, is a huge, huge offense against God. Okay? That's why he says in here, you see, if you, if you read on on that, it says that. Chapter 2 says that. Aleph Lam Mim, it says now, this book without a doubt is guidance for the God-fearing. These are the people who will respect God, who have regards for God, the highest regards for God. It's a guidance for them. For the rest of the people, it doesn't make any difference. Okay? They are going to, they are going to behave exactly the same way no matter what you show them. So now you can actually look at this okay, and, and so what it tells you is that, that chapter 43 has to have 89 verses. Chapter 47 has to have 38 verses. And now furthermore, I'm going to write, write something down here for you. 43, 43, I'm sorry, 47, 38, which is called Muhammad, is equal to 23 times 2 times 103. <clears throat> And again, if I write the, the indices of these, 23 is the nines prime number, 2 is the first prime number, 103 is the 27th prime number. Again, I'm back to 9127. Now, reminding you now that chapter 47 is actually called Muhammad. Okay? 
And this is not by accident. You see, when you see, when you see that 67, it's the 67th Ananisha Surah that was revealed. Okay, when you look at that 67, 67 happens to be the index of, of composite 92. And 92 is actually the numerical value of the word Muhammad. That's why you see those numbers. That's why I try to stress this. And when you see these numbers, that those are not just crazy numbers taken out of the air. These numbers are, are basically, they are laying a foundation upon which this whole structure is built. Okay. That's why. So again, we have to be very careful. There are a lot of claims. But our responsibility, before we accept those claims, what we have to do is show us your proof. Okay? Show us your proof. If there are no proofs there, then, then obviously it's not, it's not valid. Okay? And that's why I say that you always check the veracity of your source. If you want to accept something, you have to check the veracity of that source. You have to verify it. If that source is, cannot be proven, then there is no reason to do that. To go after that and find out about that source because because obviously it's 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 something which is not which is not uh, uh, which is not valid. Okay. So this is what I wanted to show you. Okay, because because again, when we say these things, okay, after we say the Al Fatah, which we discussed the last time, that it produces chapter. Nine having 127 verses. Every time we recite that, including just now, we just recited the Al-Fatah. So we basically said nine has 127 verses. And then right after that, chapter two, which is the longest chapter, and then chapter three, okay, they both start with Aleph Lam Mim, and those letters are telling us exactly the same thing. So there is a relation between those numbers okay, that make up those Arabic letters or set of letters and the fundamental structure, the verse structure of the Quran. So if you see, if you see a Quran which is written, it's in circulation someplace, and chapter 43 doesn't have 89 verses, you just don't touch that. Because that's not provable. You cannot prove that. If chapter 47 doesn't have 38 verses, you do not touch that. You just leave it alone. Because that is not correct. It's wrong. The verse structure is wrong. It's not true. Okay? And I just showed you why. Why we have to have this word structure? Because it is actually produced by chapter, I'm sorry, it, it, it produced by Aleph Lam Mim, which is 40301. That's how it's generated. Okay? Okay, I hope that I hope that I, I sort of conveyed this message that that it's, it's very important for us to understand and realize it. Okay, the gravity of this. Okay, and this is not something to be toyed with, and and you know and revised and, and updated and all kinds of stuff that they call it. Okay, we can we can toy with these things. Okay. So okay, so I'm going to stop here and we'll finish this raka Allahu kabir.
سبحان ربي العظيم الله الكبير الله الكبير سبحان ربي الأعلى الله الكبير الله الكبير سبحان ربي الأعلى الله الكبير الله الكبير بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الله الله الكبير Okay, now what I want to do is I want to go to the Quran and I'm going to go to chapter 41, 42. Okay. And in that chapter it says, um, we'll start with verse 41, 41 first. It says, uh, indeed, uh, those who disbelieved in, in the reminder after it came to them, have surely rejected the mighty scripture. Okay? So this is not supposed to be a source of laughter and things like that. This is, this is a very serious business. Okay? God says, no falsehood have, had ever entered it in the past. nor will it ever enter in the future. It is a revelation from the one who is the all-wise praiseworthy. Okay. Then God is telling us about this, okay, that so now we see, we see why it cannot enter, any falsehood cannot enter from those numbers that we just saw okay from these numbers that we just saw no falsehood can enter it okay from these, from these numbers we cannot put in anything in by hand or take something out it's not going to work out Hey, it's going to come out and, and tell you why it's supposed to be 9127. Hey, in so many different ways. Okay. Then God says, nothing is said to you that had not been said to messengers before you. Most assuredly, your Lord is possessor of forgiveness and also possesses the most painful consequence. Okay? We have read before about this. And as I said, I said, we cannot abuse God's mercy. Remember that? That somehow God is going to forgive us with all of the, the things that we do. Somehow we cannot abuse that, that, that merciful uh, God that, that he's telling us is the all merciful, we cannot do that. We cannot, we cannot abuse it. We cannot misuse it. We have to be careful. Okay? He is possessor of forgiveness and he also possesses the most painful consequence. Okay? Then God is telling us about, about this. And you know, all of these become more and more um, uh, more and more uh, obvious to us why these verses are saying these things after we see the mathematics. Okay? And then God is telling us here, He says, had we made it a non-Arabic Quran, they would have surely said, its verses are not elucidated. Remember those people who say, you cannot translate it, we cannot, because you cannot, you cannot elucidate in any other language this? Like when God says, thou shalt not steal, he has to say it in Arabic, otherwise we have to steal. That was the excuse that those other people would say. Hey, remember that the two other groups, they have scriptures, we don't have scripture? 
if we have scripture, would it be just as good as these people or better than them? And then the scripture came and said the same thing in their own mother tongue and they rejected it because they wanted to steal. They wanted to embezzle. So it was no fun. So then they changed it. Changed, then they said change it. Or bring something we can read. That we can justify our theft. Okay. Then God says be a non-Arab as well as Arab. Say, for those who are faithful, it is a guide and a healing. As for those who have no faith, there is deafness in their ears and they are blind. It is as though they are being called from a faraway place. Okay? So it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You can tell them in their own mother tongue. You can tell them in Arabic. You can tell it in any other language. They are going to steal, do the do the same thing, and go ahead and steal. Okay. Then God is telling us. He says, "Look, it happened before." He says we indeed gave Moses the scripture. They then disputed it. And if it were not for a preordained word of your Lord, they would have been judged immediately. God gives them time. There's a time and a place. And surely they are suspicious regarding this, full of doubt. Okay? So God is telling us again the same thing. He says, look, when this came, it had the same kind of thing because, because God says, look, what I've told you is the same as what you've told those other people. Okay? Messengers before you were told the same thing. Didn't change. God didn't change it. God didn't change the fact that you are, you're not supposed, thou shalt not steal. And, and he changed his mind and says it's okay to do that. In certain cases you can do this. He says you cannot do this, period. And it was too heavy for them. They didn't want to accept it. Okay. those elements of leading a righteous life was foreign to them because they didn't have the fundamentals the fundamentals to worship God alone and they didn't like it from the very beginning they didn't like it so upon that foundation that God alone was not enough for them so they had to have partners for God or they have to have idols besides God. Then the foundation was, was shaking and everything else crumbled on the top of that. Then they did all of the stuff that was, was opposing a righteous life. So this is what I wanted to say to you, okay, that that no falsehood can, had ever entered it in the past, nor will it ever enter in the future. It is a revelation from the one who is the all-wise praiseworthy. Okay, so we see it. We see it almost every week. Why why Quran is fully detailed? Nine is supposed to have 127 verses because God alone is telling us that. Okay, and we are not going to listen to anything else. All right? So anyway, and I want to finish with this, with this verse, 4140. 40. It says, Surely those who distort our signs are not hidden from us. Is the one who faces hell better than the one who comes perfectly secure on the day of resurrection? 
Go ahead and do what you wish. Indeed, he is all seer of everything you do. God is not going to miss it. God is watching those people who distort his signs. Okay? So again, what we have to do, we have to make sure that we do not listen to that group of people. Make sure that we ask them for proofs. And if they do not have proofs, I don't care if it's based on seven or six or whatever it is, bring it, bring that proof. And tell us why it's based on seven. Okay? Bring that proof. And, and show, it, show it to the experts. And see what they say. So what you have to do is you have to listen and analyze things. Okay, and as I said, God has given us the hearing, the eyesight, and the brain, and we are responsible for using them. Okay? Galileo didn't read the Quran, but he knew about that verse already. So God gave him the vision. And, and then the rest of the people, God takes the vision away from them. And they become blind. They are deaf and blind and they will not return. That's what God says. Okay. So I'm going to stop here and finish our Jummah. Allahum Kabir.